Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to Vintage Story Desert Life, Episode 5. This video originally aired live on April 14th, 2024. Enjoy the episode! Here we go. Welcome everybody. Welcome. My name is Corazar, and welcome back to Vintage Story Desert Life. And already, thank you so much, Kenneth Bennett. Dibs on first dono, lunch on me again, my lord. I just wanted to say we love the streams, and if you find the mall POI from Better Ruins, have fun exploring it. There's a mall? Interesting, did not know that. But welcome back. Welcome to this dry life in the desert, where last time we, well, we survived our first couple nights, we found some materials, we found some upcoming resources, and we started some clay forming in preparation for getting to the Copper Age. And we also, actually, I need to remember, we're still in creative mode because last time we ended in creative mode to free the bear over here that kept jump scaring me. So let's get out of creative mode right stat now. So there we go, we're in survival again. Turn that off. And I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk about, oh, hello bear, you're not gonna attack me. Oh, you're gonna run, walk into the fire, aren't you? <laughs> I'm gonna go over here while he walks in the fire. That's just, uh, oh, poor bear. Don't do it. Here, run away. Run away. Yeah, that's right. Run that direction. Don't walk in the fire, poor guy. <laughs> oh, boy, that could have been a disastrous. This poor cow walked into the fire, and, well, we have some free food now, I guess. So that's pretty cool. We'll get him in the morning. Anyway, I have a little handwritten note here about today's schedule while we clamber into our night sack to uh, to sleep here. What happened to the bear? We set him free at the end of last last session. Bear is off in that direct... Oh, bear is back now. Bear is just curious about fire today. So while we sleep here, I'm going to make it morning so we're not dealing with uh, nighttime drifters in our low rift tonight. But I have on the schedule today, we have bees, malachite, uh, copper age, which includes some clay forming and anvil molds and stuff. And then at the bottom here, I have robbing the whole grave trademark. Um, I think all of you who know me might know what I'm talking about because we went grave robbing last time, but we are not done with those graves because there is still grave to rob because the grave itself is a thing we can rob. Oh, bear, go away. Go away. Shoo. Oh, don't go through the fire. Yeah, keep going. Go that way. Shoo, shoo. But no, the uh, Pamela Wild, the Sunbears don't attack unless you attack them, or more commonly, if they get hurt, then they'll come after you. So, yep, keep going that way. Just just run. Stay away from the fires, my dude. I'm going to drop my torch out of my hand here. Oh, I have stuff in my inventory. i got food and all kinds of things. So let me drop off my food in one of these baskets here. And maybe I'll actually designate one of these as a food storage vessel. What have we got? Empty one and a full one. Not helpful. Not helpful. Let's see. I'm going to empty this guy into here. And any space in any of these guys? No. Okay. Well, I think we might be going without any spare storage today. But that's okay, because we're going to do a couple specific things. I'm going to keep this on me for a moment. So I think what we're going to start out with is bees, because these guys are not yet done cooking. And once they're done, we'll be able to make our first pickaxe and hair molds. And I think I have, yes, a crucible in here. And once we do, we'll be able to get our copper age going on. And we're going to go and hit these malachite deposits, because they should be pretty massive, and we shouldn't need a whole lot more uh, copper after that, at least for a little while. So, the first thing I want to do, though, before we hit bees, is see if we have enough material for bees. Do we have enough to make a skep? We need papyrus. Oh, we got plenty. And we need two clay. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Got our empty skep. There we go. That's all we need for now. There we go. And 
I think I also want to go ahead and make a fence, which let's find out how we do that. It's been a while. I want to make a fence gate, actually. Fence. Uh, rough. Fence. Rough gate. Oh, come on. It flashed by here momentarily. There we go. Rough hewn gate. There we go. Okay. Let's get this going on. All right. While well, we head over to the farms, which are in this direction, and take a moment to say hello to some new folks here. We have. I saw a new face. Here we go. Catsy. Welcome, Catsy. Oh, I won't think I'll go to waste. James, I will uh, be harvesting that momentarily. However, we still have a bowl with some food in it. I want to actually eat that first and get that gone. All right, we have our fence gate now. So we don't have to just destroy sand blocks and enter our farm that way. And yes, the farm that I, I botched last week. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, we'll just replace the water. Oh, we can't. Right, of course. And you know, I think for now I'm just going to deposit that gate there. Let's have a bit of a bite to eat. And fill our bowl. And we're going to head back to the bees over here. And on the way, we're going to pick up some flowers. Good morning, Cyber Robin. Because, of course, in order to propagate bees, we need lots of flowers for them to make some honey. Hello, Gazelle. Yes, I know it's Gazelle. <laughs> we're going to grit, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so flowers. I've been learning that it doesn't really take a ton of flowers to get bees to propagate from a natural hive into a skip relatively quickly. And here's where I'm going to forget that I don't have a lot of armor. I'm going to be like, oh, hey, look, there are some hyenas over there, and be like, oh, they're eating me. Liad. Let's get some lead marked down here. There we are. That will come in handy later. Got a couple handfuls of flowers here. Of course, we don't have the the best flower in the game for bees, which is of course lupins, big sag. But any flower will really do. Look at that! What is that up there? A lone saguaro on the mountain. Uh, Eric, friends, and don't you use soil instability? No, I do not. I actually, I don't like that in the first place, and two, it's not part of the standard survival experience, so I tend to avoid it. Well, we're going to be swimming in Galena at some point here. Necromundi, you missed Lupine Ridge? Yeah, I, uh... It was, it really feels like home still, in a lot of ways. Uh, Pamela Wild, I uh, I don't talk about uh, exactly where I live, um, but I I do live on the eastern seaboard in the U.S. So you see that I'm an EDT. Here we go, guys. Easy find for meteoric iron. I had someone ask how I find it so easily, and it really is just you look for these five by five circles, and you smack the center, and you'll find meteoric iron nine times out of ten. So let's go ahead and mark that for later. Oops, that was supposed to be a star. There we go. Let's mark the bees and pin them on the map here. Otherwise, I will end up wandering in all number of directions. Uh, Katzi, do you still play on Lupine Ridge in private? No, I actually don't. I haven't loaded up Lupine Ridge except once to get a few screenshots. Um, but aside from that, I don't I don't really go back to my old world. There's something there's something in the finality of saying goodbye for the last time and closing the world, doing the last backup, that it's just it doesn't feel not that it doesn't feel right. It's just what else is there to say? You know, I've sort of said all there is to be said in 
previous worlds. And I just... I don't have the urge. It's weird because I thought I would at one point. I thought I might turn it into a private game and just sort of fool around and occasionally post updates with things that I've created. But the reality is, one, not the time. And two, I just... It feels strange going back. <laughs> and it feels strange to say that too, actually. Welcome, Gerard. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, Jeremy Roy and Ronin's Reviews. Yeah, I haven't set up automat markers. I did not have a lot of time this week. I was on full-time toddler duty for a little while, and she gave me some toddler plague. And so the most of this week, actually, I've been dealing with toddler plague. So we have our bees right here. It is a large large nest, which is great. Let's clear out some space here. We shouldn't have raccoons to worry about because it's too warm and wet for them here. So I don't think we need to worry about like putting this up on a pole, but I will anyway, just just in case. Let's just tuck you there. We'll dig away a bit of dirt here. And let's just dump our skep here. Now, they don't have any flowers here, do they? Zero. Okay, so let's fix that. Lots of pretty orange mallow. There we go. And that should be plenty. They should uh, see that in a little while. It won't update immediately. Oh, well, I found six already. I must have been placing in the middle of an update. Necromundi, it sounds like a, a bit like driving past a house you used to live in. Yeah, it is kind of like that. Even when I loaded it up in creative to get some screenshots a couple times, or just, just the one time for Lipine Ridge, it was definitely like a similar feeling, I think. Now, while we're out here, I want to do two things before we head back and pick up with the clay forming. There is a trader right over there. So we're going to go visit them and see what they have. I might explore down that beach just sort of till the tip, and then... I want to grab maybe another stack or so of medium fertility soil because we don't have a ton out where we live in the desert. And we're probably going to want to expand our farms a little bit more in the near future. So we have ooh, some big oak trees. These are a great place to find mushrooms sometimes. And flax. Hello, flax. And pick up all the crops we can over here. I don't see any mushrooms, but... Ooh, chickens. We are going to want chickens at some point. Because we are a, a hunter, and we'll be using a lot of arrows at some point. Where are the horsetails, Nashti? Horsetails do not grow down here. They grow up in northerly climates. We'll probably find some at some point, because climates do vary a bit. Hello, pottery trader. You must be from a mod. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, so we have purple-fired crocs. We have malachite-hardened clay. And some other flower pots and things. That's pretty cool. And you're buying, like, the things to make that stuff. Okay, so sticks and peat, which we probably won't find a whole lot of down here. And some tin and copper ingots. Granite stone. Really? That's cheap. All right, let's mark you Pottery Trader. I'll probably use the same color as I do for Artisans, just because they're kind of similar. Ooh, and we have berries here. You know, I might. Let's grab the berry bushes, and I think it could be fun at some point to make like a, like a rooftop vineyard or something. So let's do that. Scenario, welcome. Your muckery failed you, huh? <laughs> That's rough. Hey, the lake filter. Welcome. Uh, now, you know, we already addressed uh, automat marker. I <laughs> didn't have time to set it up because of uh, getting toddler plague and being on maximum dad duty for most of the week. We have chert here. That's pretty cool. Probably use some of that in the future, too. Get some rice over here. I think we're doing pretty well on food for being in the desert and 
this early game. Although I know the desert does not describe where we are at the present moment. And I think, I think for now we're pretty good. I could stop and get some more cattails, but I don't think we need to spend a lot of time messing around with that right now. Hello, hello, a Brazilian with internet access. <laughs> I like the name. So let's get back. I think we should probably be about done with our clay forming or our clay firing at this point. Ooh, we got some more wild crops here. And once we get that clay firing done, we can go ahead and get our copper. We have plenty of flint, so I don't need to worry about that. It's funny, I'm not used to not playing for a week and then coming back and trying to pick up where I left off. It's usually like I record throughout the week in small bites, and that sort of leads to sort of having everything in-game loaded in my own memory. Right, speaking of memory, I wanted to get some more soil. See? Memory. Uh, the stream, like today, it started at 10. Uh, so, well, 10 my time. So about 15 minutes ago. So we're going to fill out the stack here. Just bring you onto the bar so I can see what's going on here. And it might be worth at some point, maybe not today, but maybe in the nearish future. And by today, I sort of mean today in-game, not today in the stream. Uh, but we might want to go through and collect at least some of the high fertility soil. I probably want to save most of that for Terra Preta, but it could be handy to use for some early game farming in the beginning. Or I could just get it to save it. Let's have a bite to eat over here. Yum yum, porridge all day every day. Welcome Black Fox 966. Oh, you were the one who asked how long the stream was going. That's right. Just get a bit of this going on here. And I probably won't worry about low fertility soil because while it's handy for building blocks, the flint shovel is kind of slow. A couple more. There we go. All right, let's hightail at home and check on our kilns. All right, there's an orange tree here, I forgot. And do we need more clay? I think we need more clay, too. So you know what? While we're here, I'm going to get a little bit of clay on the way home. Technic, how long do you plan on playing in the world? Um, I don't know. I have, a, I have a, a couple large builds in mind, like monolithic bases in mind. So we're going to do a couple of those. They'll, they'll sort of be in the same area, though, as each other. So you'll be able to, you know, see one from the other. As far as time, like, am I planning on playing until, you know, November, I have no idea. Um, it kind of depends on how quickly the building goes and how the stream goes in general. Oh, we're out of space. Um, you know what? Let's, let's carry you in one hand. It also depends on the timing of the next couple of releases of Vintage Story because I'm probably going to not do a Vintage Story guide for 1.20 because it just finished up 1.19, and I think I want to give the game a little more time to add more new features to explore, so I'm not sort of rehashing the same features again every year. So I might wait till like 1.21 before I start the next guide series. Uh, yep, thank you for explaining that, Pamela Wild. Um, yeah, the, the normal blue clay gets changed to blue-gray clay when you have brick layers installed. Ooh, that's trouble. That's for later. Do I have that marked? I do not. Let's mark this cave. That could be fun to explore later. There we go. And now we're going to play Dodge the Hyenas again.
Yeah, 1.20 does look like it'll be pretty big. Are you dangerous? Yes, you are. We're going to not go down here. Because <laughs> we have no armor. And no space to collect anything anyway. The other thing with 1.20 and, and diving into another guide right away is that especially in the earlier stages of a large release, there are a lot of bugs that make recording either impossible in some cases or just not really recommended. A lot of blue clay here. And I'm going to just sort of avoid those if I can. All right, back to Hyena Land. Hello. Ignore me. I have two badly broken spears and no inventory space, so please don't eat me. Judging by the in-game clock, I think I probably overshot the uh, time frame for getting back just as the kilns were done, but that's okay. We got our bees goal done for the day. And there are our friends up ahead. And my beautiful covering for our pit kilns there. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know a lot about Nightbot. Let's see. Uh, Phaedri asked about Nightbot. Should get Nightbot spamming that link on a timer. Uh, yes, Rivi is having to post Discord <laughs> links <laughs> manually. I, uh, I didn't realize that you had to set up everything, like, individually. So, I didn't. Disclaimer, I am still a second stream into my career as a streamer. <laughs> so I am not aware of all the intricacies of getting everything set up properly. So here we go, we have a fired crucible, a pickaxe mold, and a hammer mold. So... Let's try to find a way to dump our inventory in places. Uh, here we go. Got some room here. Ah, here we go. Perfect. We have, we have seeds in here. Let's see how many we can dump in here. There we go. I'm going to swap out this for seeds. I think we're good there. And a bit of grain. A bit more rice. Not bad more flax grain and some onions and black currants these aren't well the black currants won't last very long so i'm thinking uh, let's go ahead and get some more porridge going on and i think we're going to make a second fire pit so we can start our crucible while we are cooking our food assuming that i have grass there we go There we go. And firewood. Also somewhat important for fires. Let's get that going on here. There we are. And in the interest of preserving our very limited, for now, coal supply of 14, I am going to preheat our crucible with, here we go, with some wood. Get it to 700 degrees. It probably doesn't make much difference for this little copper, but let me have my illusions. All right. Let's get cooking here. And let's butcher us up this here cow. My knife. Wow, that is some serious meat there. Nice. And bones for the bone god, or for the quern, which is the bone god. Someday, we'll get organized. And, oh, that's right, someone reminded me. You can actually place at least pelts. Not sure about hides. Can you go on the ground yet? Oh, you can. And it's a crouch right quick to pick up, too. Oh, that's really cool. And you're sort of just locked to uh, 
the four cardinal directions. But supposedly, if I do a bit of this, I can lay it on the ground. And it should be able to cure right there. Oh, so we had a question earlier. How do you get the copper out of the crucible if it's cooled? You just reheat it. As long as you have enough in there to pour into something else. I mean, you, you could pour partial into a, a mold. I don't recommend it because then you end up with a mold that you really can't do anything with. Uh, but yeah, you just reheat it and it comes right back, right back out as molten. If you don't have the stuff to reheat it, you're kind of stuck. <laughs> so uh, make sure you have what you need to reheat it. And let's get our coal in here. Oh, that's right. We're going to need something. I always forget because I've been, I've been playing this game for so long that we need, here we go, some rope and some sticks to make ourselves some tongs in order to actually pick up our crucible because asbestos hands are no longer a thing. We can sing the tong song over here. <laughs> okay, let's also get another bit of firewood going here and we'll plop you in there. And let's see, we have three onions. I would like to fill out that cooking pot, but I don't think it's going to be an option today. No, it's not. So let's just tuck these guys in here and we'll do six black currants. Yeah, the wood tongs on, like, you know, thousand degree crucibles seems a little bit silly. But I guess eventually it sort of, like, gets, you know, harmonized or something. Is that what they did to uh, Han Solo? All right, I'm going to grab this bad boy, slap you over here, and our pickaxe. And I think in the morning we'll be able to go and tear apart that malachite. And... In the meantime, it might behoove us to go ahead and start clay forming a couple other odds and ends that we're going to need. Well, this is all cooking here. And I'm thinking an anvil mold and probably two to start ingot molds, maybe even four ingot molds, because doing two is just painful sometimes. Uh, James Winterbottom asks, you didn't get enough grain for the pot. You can't do a red meat stew with grain. Red meat stew only works with uh, red meat, or actually any, any meat, really. And then you have to fill the rest with uh, vegetables and or fruit. And you can only do one uh, sort of slot with fruit. Nick Seromaticon asks, are we going to swing the pick side to side? Is that because of the new uh, the new animations? I think they're they're interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about them overall. They're they're not often timed up terribly well with what you're doing. Like the the pick animation is like very slow compared to the tink 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 that you hear in the audio. So I hope there is something coming with you know sort of better timing on the animations and the sounds. Welcome to Snack. You watching the videos and caught the stream today? Cool. I'm glad that the the video format is working out. I the response to the uh, the sort of chopped up videos was overwhelmingly positive. I mean, I got a few people who said that they weren't interested, but that's that's okay. That just means that those aren't really for you. Uh, I got a lot of comments from people who have like kids who have a an episode of Kurzar before dinner, after school, and homework is done, uh, and this is kind of for those people uh, who want that kind of thing, and for people who just like smaller bites of vintage story than, you know, a three-hour stream where VOD can provide. Uh-oh. Did I run out of this? Oh, hey, we're actually done. Let's go ahead and we're going to pour this guy. That bear is back. <laughs> Not thrilled about that. All right. Let's get this pickaxe poured. And let's get this hammer mold poured. Nice. Very nice. We are well on our way. 
to the copper age. And we have some very nutritious food here, actually. This will give us basically three quarters of a full bar of food. So that is really handy. Let's fill up. Well, let's just drop you there. And let's finish up this mold here. And then I think we'll go ahead and rest, make it morning. And then we'll go and deal with the pickaxe situation. Well, the use of pickaxe situation. Someone did suggest that I, I could put on the clay forming mod that makes you not have to actually do the clay forming. Um, let me know what you think. If, if that's sort of something you guys would rather and just skip, uh, that's fine. I, I could add it on. It does cost a little bit more clay, but that's that's okay. The Kratos Waterman says the bear might not leave because it spawned here. I'm not sure that it hangs out near spawn. Most animals will roam, like, a lot. I think it has more to do with, because I'm in the area, it's going to stay loaded in, um, like, while I'm, while I'm here. And depending on... Basically, if, if, if it gets near the edge of where I cause it to be loaded in, it might stop moving. And so there's a greater chance that it will end up coming towards us than away from us. I think that's kind of how it works. It works like that in the other block game. I know that mobs in Vintage Story do tend to wander when they're unloaded as well. We're almost there with this one. Never Johnson says you like watching the clay forming. Okay. Yeah, the animations can get a bit weird. You can get stuck in an animation, too. Hey, there we go. We're all done with that one. Let's get you in here. And you guys in here. I don't know that we have enough grass to fire these, though. We don't. Okay, where is grass? And can I see it in the dark? Let's see. There should be some grass to our north. With the literal, you know, grass patch up, up here. Oh, there's some right here. Sweet. Get a bunch of this stuff here. Hey, welcome, Nicholas. Yeah, Hazard151, we were talking about that. That's what I was saying about the clay forming mod, where you just sort of do it in your crafting grid, and the, it costs a bit more clay, but it's like, you know, instant. Yeah, that was my other concern. Some of the mods that make some processes faster come at the cost of making other process slower. And that was sort of why I wanted to sort of ask you guys about it before I made that decision. One thing I've, I will look forward to is having a scythe so you don't have to watch me cut grass in the dark for like a minute straight. We need about 30. Oh, we're good on grass at the moment. I'm going to get a few more because we might need it for fires and other soon... Soon pit kilns. The pottery wheel mod. I haven't thought about that. Um, I might look into it. I might not add it to the the game just because I've already like published you guys a big uh, zip file full of all the mods used. I I kind of want to avoid issues where like people who have already installed the mod pack are like, hey, where did this come from? You weren't using it. I don't have it. Uh, then I have to be like, oh, well, go to any one of the videos and download the mod pack again. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Okay. There we go. Get this going on. And I think the next long pole in the tent is going to be sticks. Because I only have like 17. We need a few more. Okay. Oh, and I have two stacks of flax. Let's marry those. And I'm going to dump the rest of our blue clay into here. And I think we're good. Let's start from the sticks. So let's get you going. We need seven more for this guy. The nearest trees are probably down here more oak and jungle over here looks like 
We'll have to get some of that, I think, in the morning. We'll probably hit the Malachite in the morning, and then we'll go pick up sticks. The, the less fun version than the game. But for now, let's get some more of our firewood cut. There we go. And get these filled up. I'll just tuck you here. Oswin awesome. Foe says, you see there's a beehive kill mod? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to try that out. I've, I've seen a couple people say that there are some minor issues with it, but I hope those are easy to iron out. And I don't know if they've been fixed either, so. Oh, we've got some rot we can marry. Always looking for an opportunity to consolidate inventory in the early game. All right, you go here. Grass goes in here. And I might as well just plant the bushes. There isn't really a reason not to. I'm going to go ahead and eat these because they'll, they'll just rot. And I think we're good to go ahead and rest for the evening. And I just realized that we're going to have to go stick picking because I have one stick and we need, this, we need two sticks. One for the hammer, one for the pickaxe. So we might have to do a bit of that before we go mining. We're going to rest for the night, and then I'm going to probably try to get out of bed at like 6, if not earlier. Let's see what happens here. You have to be like really good at timing, because at 4.30, you hit the button to get up, and you get to up an hour and a half later. So, a little weird. Alright, well, let's get you. I don't need to bring the hammer with us. Let's go ahead and get this going on. And... Just drop these bushes here for now. Maybe not right next to that. There we go. And I'm going to bring the spears just because there are lots of hyenas around. And there we go. All right, let's see. Lakeville, do you love the minimalist base? Yeah, it's definitely minimalist on purpose. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> okay, let's go hit the sticks real quick. And then we'll hit the malachite. I feel kind of dirty going and actually mining malachite because I think it's such a pretty block. One, one plan that I never really got to do was an idea that I had in the first season of the guide series where I was going to build like a big museum, like on the scale of the entirety of the build that I had at Lipine Ridge. Uh, like, this museum would be at least the size of every build we had done the entire season. And I, I kind of chickened out. One, because I wanted to go south, and I had sort of been delaying going south. And two, I sort of thought about the scale of that build, and I was like, oh, man. But I really wanted to do, like, a... You know how museums have, like, a, a kid's area? Like, where they have little activities and so on for kids to do? I wanted to do like a mine your own malachite thing and like chisel away some malachite and leave some pickaxes lying around as if kids had been there mining out their malachite from some limestone in the ground. And I thought that would be a lot of fun. And maybe, maybe in the future I'll get around to the, oh, hello hyena. Maybe in a future guide series or something, we will do the malachite mining experience. Oh, and it is time to eat. So one thing I want to comment on about eating is something that I see a lot of uh, streamers and uh, other YouTubers do is they'll they'll fill their bowl and eat it multiple times in one sitting, and don't don't do that, <laughs> just don't. So the the food buff you actually get a big buff from uh, food by eating it and then waiting because if you have a meal. It provides a satiation pause for 30 seconds per 100 satiation in the meal. And if you have a second meal that provides the same pause, it doesn't it doesn't stack. It overlaps. The the greater the greater value takes precedence. So if you have like a big bowl of red meat stew and you're like I'm going to eat enough to fill this up, well you're throwing away like 
uh, in this case, about, what, almost five minutes of satiation pause. So, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Nick's from Radicon. I, I never use a chisel, that's right. <laughs> I am known for my mental spaces. Well, if anyone saw the uh, the Rusty Gears season that I was in part of, uh, I did live in a dirt hut for, like, the majority of that <laughs> series. So uh, I will happily own up to the uh, King of Dirt moniker if need be. Uh, Nashti, I, I did say last week that I wasn't going to run, but now that we have meals, it is completely safe to run now because when you're on the satiation pause, you you don't lose satiation no matter what you do. So I can run, I can jump, I can fight, I can heal for the next, at this point, probably three-ish minutes, and it won't affect my hunger at all. It's only once this starts dropping, so you'll see how, like, if I hover over that, it's paused, it's not dropping at all, in a few minutes, that will start dropping again. At that point, that's when various activities will sort of take away a specific chunk of your satiation. Nixermaticon, you say that you, uh, so you, you commit the sin of eating and then eating again. Yeah, it's, it's pretty common. And I think it's not well explained in the game. Uh, I, it would be nice-ish to see the food buff stack, but it it does, I don't know, I guess it's not a priority. And we're pretty good on sticks here. Oh, we got some uh, some seeds here, too. Oh, no, I don't like that sound. Okay, we just have one baby, one baby hyena running away. That's good. I can deal with the babies. So, fun fact, I would love to get my hands on some of this uh, ebony, but we can't right now because we have this wonderful copper pickaxe, or copper axe, requires bronze to break. So I could hammer this forever and it would go nowhere. So, yep, that's why I'm not bothering to chop down the tree. Oops. Don't waste the axe with the sticks. I think we do have a bronze axe, though, don't we, back at the base? Didn't we get one from a, a tool vessel last week? Hello there, Granny S. Who else is here? Oh, Andy Day has made it. Hey, welcome. And Java Kitsune, welcome to the stream. I think we're good on sticks now, so let's run over to the... Well, the soon-to-be Malachite Mines. Keep an eye out for the puppy dogs out here. Ooh, like that one. Got some flaxseed. Uh, oh, I thought it was peanuts. That is just tool. Or is it tool? No, brown sedge, okay. Is there animal taming? Yes, some animals can be tamed, uh, many cannot. Um, of the animals, the only ones that are tameable in the vanilla game are the pigs, the bighorn sheep, uh, all of the goats, uh, and chickens. You can kind of breed rabbits by uh, sort of like, like capturing them in a hole somewhere or like a barn and then throwing food in their pen, but it's... You don't really domesticate them. They're always afraid of you, no matter what. I'm going to run the hyena gamut again. Or gauntlet gamut. Hey, more lead. Look at that. Who'd have thunk it? There we go. Okay, so Malika is down this way. Alexander FF, welcome. And you don't know why, but you feel like the Pies have a, a longer pause. Um, especially meat pies, those can have a, long, a really long pause in general. Uh, as far as satiation goes, there are often bugs that crop up in the game in regards to satiation. Uh, and one of them is that sometimes your satiation can get stuck at a certain level and it will not drop for a while. Oop, there we go. Who doesn't love digging through gravel? Ooh, this is bountiful. Oh, man. Guys, we have hit the jackpot right here. But yeah, so I've actually hit that bug, especially where, like, if you eat right before you sleep, uh, 
then sometimes it will get stuck at that satiation level and you'll just have a full day of being able to just run around and do whatever. Now this is actually kind of unfortunate is that it is right below the surface, so we're gonna have to dig out all this junk here. And that's <laughs> that's really depressing. <laughs> so uh we don't we have a uh, shovel back at home? Like a, a tin bronze shovel? I might run and get that because this is gonna be a lot of digging with the shovel and sand in the way here. Goodbye, shovel. Okay. Yeah, let's hit up let's hit up a stair step here. We'll get one more piece of malachite. Let's run home, grab our, our good shovel, and let's get back to this, because that's gonna be a real pain in the butt. Well everyone, that's going to about do it for this episode of Vintage Story Desert Life. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by leaving a like or a comment in the box below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. As always, my name has been Kurazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.